I'm still here at Garden State Comic Fest 2023, and I'm standing next to a legend in the business. He's been kicking ass for so many years. I'm here with the legendary... Greg Hildebrandt. Of the Hildebrandt brothers. Um, special respect to your brother um, that he passed on, you know. He's here with us in spirit, but not here physically. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming here and spending time with us. You know, I'm sure there are things, other things you want to do. Um, Please tell us, um, tell my audience members, I know about you. I've seen um, your Home Shopping Network specials with your brother on there. They're always fun to watch, but I'm not going to blab, rant on. Um, please tell us um, your origin story. Um, how did you and your brother get started? Well, we were, draw we were twins. We were twins, so we started, I was born in 19, we were born in 1939. I mean, we were both drawing together from the earliest age, probably three years old. I can remember three, being three years old. And, and we worked together on just about everything that we did, not just drawing, but making costumes and puppets and, you know, uh, uh, making eight millimeter movies together. So it's been from the very beginning, in a sense, that we've been working together, you know. Okay. So um, what was it like for you guys to tackle your first assignment? Because um, from what I was reading online about you guys, either one of you will model or both of you will model. You mean model for the... Yes. Well, that yeah, either because we we need a reference uh, source, and Tim would we'd get Tim in a costume or me in a costume, and we would shoot each other. Or if there was a if we needed two people together, we'd grab somebody, a friend with a, and, and, and shoot pictures of us. But we started that very early on, posing for each other as little kids, just to, to learn how to draw. Basically, Tim would sit or stand and make some movement, and I would draw him, and and, and vice versa with me. So it's uh, we would you know we worked like that for from the very beginning. Okay, so um, tell me about the very first commission you both worked on together. What was that about? Oh, my God. I mean, professionally, we started working for an, uh, an animation company or a filmmaker. I'm, like, again, I was born in Detroit, and Detroit was the biggest industrial filmmaker in the country, the Jam Handy organization, started by a man, Jameson Handy, who was friends of the Fleischer brothers who did Betty Boop and Popeye and the great Superman cartoons of the 40s. And uh, they... Uh, Max Fletcher worked there for a while, and his animators were there. The first job that we had, Tim and I, professionally was working for that company. We were 18 years old, graduated high school, did six months active duty in the Army, and then came back and, and uh, went to work for this company, and we worked in the animation department. So that was literally the first professional job that we, we ever did was working. And the very first film that we worked on at this company in the animation department was a training film, film for the Air Force. We were opaquing cells. So uh, what does it mean to opaque an uh, animation cell? In this particular case, the, 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 a pilot in Korea had come up with new combat maneuvers. And this would be in the 1952. And this would be 19, uh, what the heck was it, 60, uh, 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 60, early 60s, that they were now implement these combat maneuvers. What, what it consisted of was these little pie-cut shapes that flew around showed you the combat maneuver. It was like a literally a pie cut with a tail sticking out, animated in 3D, you know, pieces of paper, uh, pencil drawing on pieces of paper, which are registered on a pig bar. And then acetate sheets are laid on top of that and, and registered on a pig bar. And the inker inks in the uh, pie cut. Then they put that on a shovel, let it dry. They put, handed it to us, Tim and me. You flip the cell over and you you apply paint, which has been pre-mixed, for the friendly plane and the enemy plane. In those days, the friendly plane was blue, and the enemy plane was red. And we, for eight months, that's all we did was we'll take a little bit of paint, dip it in, paint this little pie cut, dip it in, paint it. And, you know, it's quite a, uh, how can I say, not exciting job, but it's basically starting in the business. And you, you learn from the ground floor up. That's but, that's, that's what painting sells. That's amazing, man. So what was it like for you, to, for you guys to create your very first painting commission? What the heck? Well, that would have been in uh, a, a painting commission. It would be more uh, uh, illustrated books. And they, and they would be uh, the first book that we illustrated was about 1963. Because we were making documentary films for several years. We ran camera, like you, with sound. And I was explaining to you a little earlier, I would be carrying around gigantic, you know, Aeroflex 16 millimeters or eight Claire's, Nagra tape recorders, battery packs all around our waist. And we went to 
Listen, listen, I was making films for a, a man, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. He was a Catholic bishop who had this obsession to bring Americans to an awareness of the third world, the poor and starving of the world, to, to show the haves and the have-nots. So those, I came from Detroit here to New York City to make films of that nature. So uh, that, I did everything with my brother. We shot, we edited, we structured the scripts for, for the bishop, and... Uh, 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 so that was like the really first big commercial and one of those movies contained a bunch of paintings that Tim and I did together for this particular film so that that sort of like is how we started really painting together in that sense commercially you see so. okay. was there ever a job that you and your brother said you know we're gonna have to pass on that that's not really for us find somebody else uh, yeah I mean I would do that with uh, cigarette commercials because, you know, I had smoked. I, I smoked cigarettes, but I knew then I'd quit in the danger of smoking, so I refused to do cigarette commercials. And, I mean, I even got to the point of that I wouldn't do any uh, alcohol commercials, you know, any paintings for that nature. Not, you know, not that, don't get me wrong, I'm not a prude about it. I just didn't want to be part of promoting anything that may be addictive or hurtful to somebody. So I would say no to that kind of stuff. Okay, I, I understand. I respect that. You know, um, I'm not a. I'm someone that used to drink beer, liquor, but I quit, obvious for obvious reasons. <laughs> I won't do it anymore. All right. Um, so, what was the hardest assignment you both ever had? Oh my God, the hardest. I think not. Hard, well, hard. Uh, we we uh, in 1994 we started working on a trading card series for Marvel Comics, Marvel Masterpieces. It was 100. And, 59 paintings I believe in that first set and we had we had six months to paint them 159 paintings wow. so literally that was cranking out art I mean you had to come up with a system we already had our system because we had worked together for many years you know we had a system so to speak and this one we had to particularly come up with a, a system that was different which we did and we were able to get meet the deadline but midway in it a new project rose up, which I couldn't say no to, which my agent and Gene had got for us, was my friend Michael Uslan, who's produced uh, the, Batman. the Batman movies. Yeah. He optioned Terry and the Pirates, which was a comic strip in the 1930s and 40s. And uh, uh, Tribune Media owned that in Chicago, and he optioned it to develop it for film and decided you know, the possibility of doing it as a comic strip. So he talked to Tri Tribune Media, who owned it, and then called Jean and said, would Tim and Gray like to do this? And she said yes, without asking Tim or me. And I, she, she stuck her head in a drawer. We're still working on this other card. She says, guess what your next project is? Terry and the Pirates, dailies and Sundays. I mean, that's 365 days of artwork, right? And I flipped out. Tim and I both did because we grew up on Terry and the Pirates. I mean, we grew up on Milk Kniff, the artist. He was one of the, the masters, the maestros back in the day. That any kid that drew was emulating his fight, fight scenes with the planes and everything. He was drawing that stuff all the time. And so I freaked. And, and I, I'm not an inker. I mean, I've inked, but you know, either was Tim, you know? And so that's a whole specialty. We're painters. And so I, I freaked out. I told Jean, I can't do this. She says, it's done deal. The, the, the contract's all signed already. You're, you're doing it. I says, okay. But I mean, I love... This is you're talking about hard. I don't know if that's hard or you're just you're just gonna have to make your mind up to do it, and it, uh, in in a sense the fear turns into excitement. You got to find some way to turn the fear into excitement so that that turns you on. And in fact, both Tim and me loved challenges because that's what pushes you forward. So it's it's well, it's a good thing she did get you the job, and it's also a better thing you guys decided to rise to the challenge. That's cool, man. That's great. That's the only way to operate. I mean, you know, because if you don't, what do you do? You move nowhere, man. You just stay stagnant. Things have to change and move forward. And you have to uh, be very, very, have a, a, a very positive attitude and be very extremely enthusiastic about it. That has to be an internal thing that I don't know where that comes from. I, I was always had it. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if you can learn that. I don't know how that works. I mean, talent's one thing, or the ability, what they call talent, to be able to be able to draw. You you can you can learn that. You can go. To, you can really be taught that. In, in, but but the 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 obsession to keep proceeding forward against all odds. I I don't know where that comes from. I guess heredity, maybe. So here's one question I've always wanted to ask. Did anyone offer to like make an animated movie based on your artwork, like they did for Frank Frazetta, or that offer has never come your way and it's all good? You know. 
No, nobody's ever offered to do it, but Tim and I did a novel, a, gra a, gra a, a novel illustrated and wrote it with a friend, Jerry Nichols, uh, called Ursharak. That was, we had illustrated The Lord of the Rings for Valentine Books. We did three calendars, and we decided to do our own story in that genre. And I, and I, and I thought maybe it should be a film, too. So I was trying to pitch it as a movie uh, in, in, through the William Morris Agency. And both, either, either or, either as an animated film or a live action film. You, you know, pitch it both ways, and, and we had a whole presentation, and we, we uh, through the William Morris Agency, we would go there, directors, producers would come in and look at our pitch, and uh, so they were enthusiastic about it, but it was, it's about timing, too, in this world. See, we, we, we illustrated the rings, very successful, huge success, globally, we had a fandom now, that's in the 70s, mid to the late 70s, and then... Then we did the Star Wars poster for the Star Wars movie, which catapulted the fame into a whole other level. And so we started our own novel, like I say, which was a fantasy epic, uh, you know, a sword and sorcery. And, uh, and then Star Wars came out. We did the first poster, and then Star Wars came out. And everybody, is, 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 this whole world, Hollywood, the industry, is all has to emulate uh, what is successful. They Star Wars. So, well, no, Lord of the. Uh, we we were famous for the Lord of the Rings, and Star Wars came out, and the world went crazy for Star Wars. I mean, any any young people that don't know or weren't born at that time and don't remember anything, it was like AC, uh, BC and AD. Literally on that level of a f turnover in the world, it went crazy for it. We got swept up into the craze, and in our our, our novel, Urshak, which we were pitching through the William Morris Agency again, and on our own through various uh, to a various other studios, they said, "Turn this into a space opera. Don't don't forget this old magic sword and sorcery thing. Make it space. Make it outer space." So I said, "Well, but that, that, that's uh, that's already there. I can't. You know what I mean?" But they they were kind of like afraid to go ahead with fantasy. Yeah, uh, which reminds me to ask you this. So, did uh, Mattel ever reach out to you to say, "Hey, we love you guys' artwork. You should paint some of our Masters of the Universe toys." No. Okay. No. Which would be a fun project. I would love to see your rendition of He-Man and Skeletor because, I mean, your artwork kicks a lot of ass and takes no prisoners. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that very much. That's a great compliment. It, it's it kicks a lot of ass and takes no prisoners. Ah, it, it I does. love it. That, um, I also want to talk about um, your appearance on Home Shopping Network. Did your agent um, make that happen for you, or that was something you and your brother pursued on your own? Oh, no, no, we never. Jean was doing all that stuff. I, I, we met in 1979, and uh, she said, you paint and draw, I'll do everything else. So she does everything else, and, and, I, and she rep both Tim and me you know, until his death and, uh, and, and continues with me. She works on everything. She structures everything. She arranges everything, anything like that, the home shopping. All that stuff is arranged by her. She sets it all up, and we I show up. Let's right. put it that way. Here's the thing you don't know. I, let me tell you how I learned about you. My mother was watching Home Shopping Network, <laughs> and she, 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 was, she heard about you guys, and she said, I want you to watch these guys on the show. What are you talking about? Oh, these guys are professional artists. They're brothers. I'm like, really? That's how I learned about you and your brother, and then the Star Wars stuff started kicking in for me because... I didn't really, I wasn't exposed to what you guys were doing when I was growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. I was part of the um, 80s kids where I grew up watching all the Japanese cartoons. Oh, this stuff is fantastic. Oh, yeah, the, co the American slash co-productions. And so that's, that's what I grew up on. And here's something funny you don't know. One of the animators from uh, some of those American cartoons back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, they're actually walking around right now. Oh, really? That's incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. You ever heard of Tech Amanda Space Night? Yeah. The guy that produces and writes and directs, William William Winkler. You, you, you probably was at this table, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here with that animator. Oh, wow, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they have a lot of great people at this show. This is one of my favorite shows to do. Probably my favorite show to do. I, I like the show because I can meet who I want to meet without any red tape, and it's family-friendly, and it's not dealing with any um, malarkey. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's a great. It's fantastic. It's close. Yeah, warmer and family friendly indeed. I mean, and the, the people that run it are fantastic to work with. And it's just a beautiful thing. And 
audience here is very friendly. Um, a lot of the, the illustrators and writers, they're great to be around. I just got to say, man, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for ha coming here, and thank you for spending time with me. You definitely made one of my wishes come true, just to meet you. That's it. Man, thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, truly. So if somebody wants to contact you, they have to go through your agent, right? Well, they go, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, let's put it that, yes. Okay. That's spiderwebart.com. Gene okay. at, J-E-A-N, at spiderwebart.com. That's all one word. All right, well, you guys heard what the man said. This, the best way to reach him is go through his agent. And she's the one that makes all the magic happen. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you here next year. You will. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Until next time.